In this video, I want to show you how you can install Cubes OS on an external drive or an external USB key. So this way you can take it with you and start Cubes OS and browse the internet securely from whatever PC you want. The first step is to download Cubes OS ISO from the official Cubes OS website. So start your web browser and go to cubes-os.org and hit enter. Click on download and install and then scroll to find the latest stable release. So this is the latest stable release which is 4.0.3 at the time of this video. It might be different when you see this video. So this is here to download directly from your web browser and if you have a torrent client it would be faster if you download it via torrent. But here I don't have a torrent client, so I'm gonna click on this one here, and the download should start. It's a pretty big download, it's 4.5 gigabyte, so it will take some time, of course, depending on your internet speed. So I'm gonna cut this video now and come back when the download finishes. After the ISO download finishes, you need to image the ISO file to USB key. Choose a USB key that is 8 GB or more. Here I already inserted an 8 GB USB in my computer. So this is the first step to prepare the USB key and then later I'm gonna show you how to install it on another USB key. So you need two USB keys. But for now, let us copy the ISO file to the first USB key which is 8 GB. So to do this on Windows 10 you need to open the web browser and go to rufus.ie and download the latest version of Rufus Portable. So scroll down and when you see Rufus Portable here, click on it. It will download. This is an executable file, so it doesn't need installation. Once it is downloaded, let me go to the downloads folder. So I click the three dots here and then click show in folder. And this is Rufus. So double click Rufus to open it. Click yes if prompted. I'm gonna check for updates. I'm gonna click on yes. And this is Rufus started. Let me minimize everything. And here be careful because all the information on the USB key will be wiped. So make sure you are using a USB key that you don't need the information that is on it. And in case you have other external drives that are connected to your computer, make sure the correct USB key is selected. Here I have only this USB key inserted in my computer, so it was automatically selected by Rufus. So here you need to click on select, and then select the downloaded Cubes ISO file, and click on open. Leave these by default here, and then in the file system also leave it by default, and then click on start, it will ask you if you want to download the Linux, click on yes. And here it's very important to choose write in DD image mode. So choose it and then click on OK. And here is the warning saying that all the data will be wiped. So here I'm sure that I want to wipe my USB key. So please make sure that you are using a USB key once again that you don't need the data on. And then click on OK and the writing of the ISO image starts. So I'm gonna cut this video now and come back when the writing finishes. When the writing of the image file is finished, you can close Rufus. So now we have a USB key that holds the installation files of cubes. We need to prepare another USB key that is more than 32 gigabyte for instance, choose a USB key which is 64 gigabyte or more. And this will be the USB key that we will install cubes on. Of course, you can also use an external hard drive if you have one. For this video, I will be using an external SSD with 256 gigabyte on it because it's much faster than a USB key. Now I'll be switching to an external camera and show you the installation procedure. The next step on the PC that you want to use to do the installation 
insert the installation USB key. Do not insert the target USB key now. Then turn on your PC and press the hot boot key that will take you to the boot menu. This is a Dell PC, so I pressed F12. I'm gonna put a list of hot boot keys in the description for popular PC and laptop models. On the boot menu screen, make sure USB storage is selected and press enter. This will make the PC start from the USB key and it will take you to the installation of Cubes OS. So you'll get this screen and on this screen here now, before continuing, you need to insert the target USB key or the target SSD disk. So I'm going to insert my target SSD disk now. After inserting the target media, make sure that test this media and install cubes is selected and then press enter. The installation will begin. It's a pretty lengthy installation. So I accelerated the video here. So this is the screen. It takes time, but here, as I told you, I accelerated the video. And once the installation begins, it will prompt you to choose your language. By default, it shows here English and English United States for the keyboard, of course. If you are using another language or another keyboard, choose the language and keyboard you want. Here, I'm going to keep everything on English US and simply click on continue. On this screen here, you can also change the keyboard once again, and also you can set your time and date. Here it detected the right time and date for me. So now you have to click on installation destination to choose the destination of the installation. As you see here, the installation detected the hard disk and it also detected the external SSD. So make sure that you choose the right one because everything on it will be wiped. So do not choose your hard disk. Of course, if you want to install it on your hard disk, feel free to do this, but this is not the purpose of this video. So I selected the SSD drive and I kept it on automatically configured partitioning. I also kept it on encrypt my data. And then click on done. And here, because encrypt my data was selected, I need to put a passphrase to decrypt the OS each time it starts. So make sure you put a strong passphrase. I just showed you that if you put a weak passphrase, it will give you a warning. So I put a strong passphrase and then click on save passphrase. And then here you need to click on reclaim space. We are going to delete everything on the SSD drive. So make sure that you don't have data on it once again that you need. So click on delete all after you select the root of the SSD drive and then click on reclaim space. Now that everything is ready, click on begin installation and the installation should begin. Now when the installation starts, you see that it prompts you to create a user. So just click on user creation. I'm going to create a user for me here named KST for knowledge sharing tech. Of course, create the user you want. And once again, put a strong password for the user. Here, if you put a weak password, it will not let you create the user. After you put the information for the user, click on done and the installation starts. It's a very lengthy installation. You should be patient and give it time. It is lengthy because it writes around 32 gigabytes. This is the volume of the operating system. So it is writing this on an external media. If it's a USB key, it will take much longer than an SSD drive. Here, fortunately, I have an SSD drive. So now I'm going to cut this video and come back when the installation is almost finished. Almost 30 minutes later, the installation is almost finished. And now this is the final steps. And you see when it finishes, it will give you a complete message on the bottom left, as you see. So now click on reboot. And at this stage, you need to remove the installation media. So remove the installation media now. And then while it is rebooting, press F12 to start from the target disk. So you need to press F12 or whatever hot boot key you have for your PC model. And then once again, choose USB storage device and press enter. So the computer will start from the SSD drive, the one that we installed cubes on. It is starting now. 
and it will ask you to put the password for the disk. This is the encryption password we used at the beginning of the installation. So just put it and then press enter. And on this screen here, you'll notice that you need to continue the configuration. And this is only for the first start. You notice the warning sign, click on it. And here is some choices that you can choose to finish the configuration. I'm going to leave everything by default and click on done. And then I'm going to click on finish configuration. And the configuration will continue. This is a very lengthy phase here. So give it time. And even in the middle of the phase, you're going to notice that the progress bar will stop. So don't worry. That doesn't mean that the installation was stuck. Just to make sure that it is not stuck, if your external media has a LED light, look at it. If it is blinking, it means that the installation is continuing. And this is the case in most cases. So I'm going to now cut this video and come back when the configuration finishes. When the configuration finishes, the startup continues and it will prompt you to put the password for the user you created. So here I'm putting the password for KST. This is the user I created and just press enter. And at first start, it will ask you to configure how you want to connect to the internet. So it gives you three options. You want to connect through the Tor network or you want to configure a proxy or you want to disable Tor. So here I'm going to keep it on connect through the Tor network. This is the most secure way in my opinion and click on next and then it will configure Tor. And this is only the first time. Please note that the PC I'm using here is connected to the internet with a wired network, so Ethernet network. I tried it on many PCs with wireless cards and it didn't work. Apparently, CubeOS has limited compatibility with wireless cards. When Tor bootstrapping is done, all you have to do is click on Finish and CubeOS will be connected to the internet through Tor. And now it is ready to be used. And you should know that CubeOS is a very heavy operating system. So here I have a machine that is very powerful. It's a 16 gigabyte machine with an Intel i5 9th generation CPU and it's really slow. So here I'm going to choose domain personal and then I'm going to start Firefox. And let me show you how it connects to the internet. So here it's starting the personal domain as you see. And see when I told you that it's really slow. And here's Firefox starting. So I'm going to open a new tab and just connect to YouTube to show you that the internet connectivity is working. And here's YouTube. And you see that it connected. And that was all. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, please share it, subscribe to my channel, and give this video a thumbs up. Thank you for watching.